Welcome to Forward Life Church online service. We are glad that you decided to join us today. We hope that you have been enjoying our services. If you missed any of our previous week's services, you can go back to our Facebook page or our YouTube channel to watch. I will leave you with the scripture. John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 15 says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. Thanks again for joining us. Good morning, family. How's everybody doing out there? I'm super excited that you made it this far to our final week of the Linked series. We've been dealing with relationships, and I'm so glad that you've walked with us from the beginning of this series to this point. Yes, this is the final week. I know all good things must come to an end, but I'm excited that you were able to travel with us throughout the course of what we've talked about, the importance of relationships. And I know for the most part, we dealt with inextricable relationships and we talked about a lot of things uh, over the course of the past four weeks regarding relationships that worked out. However, I would be remiss in my duty if I didn't share with you how to handle relationships when they fall apart. <laughs> how do you handle a relationship when things go wrong is what I want to deal with today. I saved this particular thought for last because I think it's important that we take a look at this as well. A lot of the times we have a history of relationships that didn't work out. And it's nothing to really be ashamed of because it happens, right? And until we learn how to handle these types of things, they will continue in our lives. Travel with me, ladies and gentlemen, if you will, to Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 3, and then we're going to skip over to Acts chapter 15, verses 36 through 41. What amazes me is people want to walk in the gifts of the Spirit, but don't even know how to get along with other people. And I want to share a story with you that I find very interesting and very intriguing. Two people who were spiritually gifted but had a falling out. We're going to go to Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 3 first, and then we're going to skip over to Acts chapter 15, verses 36 through 41. Let's go there. Here it is. It says in Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 3, Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Serene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit, watch this, the Holy Spirit said, 
Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Acts chapter 15 verses 36 through 41. Watch this. Then after some days, Paul, who was previously called Saul, said to Barnabas, let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Now Barnabas was determined to take with them John called Mark. But Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. Watch this. Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. <laughs> I want you to notice something, ladies and gentlemen. Two friends got into it to the point where they were so irritated with one another that they had to part ways. But one of them still was able to bless those who encountered him in his next season. I want to speak from the subject of no thanks I'm good. <laughs> no thanks. I'm good. The text says contention came about because Barnabas wanted to bring John Mark along with them. And Paul said, no, he didn't commit much to this particular work. So he shouldn't go with us on another journey. They parted ways, and in my opinion, Paul was like, no thanks, I'm good. I would like to approach this final installment of our link series with some general observations, if you will allow me to. I think sometimes we over-spiritualize scripture to the point where we miss powerful life points. Sometimes when you're just reading scripture and you're really not embodying scripture, you kind of miss some important points. I know a few weeks ago when we were in our uh, discipleship, Wednesday night discipleship, people started laughing when I started acting out the part of a particular scripture. But for me, when I read scripture, I embody the scripture. I feel the scripture. I find myself encased in the scripture, encapsulated and, and captivated with the scripture to the point where I feel like the person that I'm reading about, or I feel like I was there. And that's how you get a word picture for what's going on in the text. And so sometimes we over spiritualize the text to the point because to the point where we miss the lessons as they unfold. And this particular account between Paul or Saul and Barnabas has some things in it that I believe we can learn from. When you understand the history between Paul and Barnabas, you will know how painful this departure must have been for the both of them. And the reason I say that is, let me first point out that it was Barnabas who was very instrumental in the reassertion of Paul's ministry. Initially, Paul, Saul, or Paul, when he was converted to the Christian faith, 
Very few believed in him. He found himself in a place where the Christians didn't trust him. And the Pharisees felt betrayed by him. However, in the midst of the lack of trust and in the midst of the betrayal, there was Barnabas who believed in him. I want you to understand how painful this had to have been for the both of, both of them because while Jews plotted to kill him and Christians wanted to deny him, it was Barnabas who vouched for him. Barnabas was always in Paul's corner the whole course of their relationship he was always there for Paul matter of fact even after Paul took a 10 year hiatus from ministry it was Barnabas who recommissioned him in the ministry it was born of us who convinced him of his gift it was born of us who convinced him that he had something to offer it was born of us who reintroduced him to ministry assignments it was born of us who saw value in him and can you imagine what it was like to be paul in this particular situation the only person who had ever believed in you the only person who had ever saw value in you the only person who had ever trusted you to the degree that they were willing to put their name and stake their name behind yours, you now have a confrontation with. What do you do when the only person who believed in you is now at odds with you? What do you do when the only person who saw value in you is now upset with you? What do you do when the only person who trusted you is now angry with you? And the answer I see here is you can either be beholden or emboldened. Did you hear what I said? You can either be beholden or emboldened. In other words, you can either feel as if you owe them and spare their feelings, or you can be bold enough to tell them the truth about themselves. You, you can either be, act as if you owe them something, or you can be a bold enough and truthful enough to tell them about themselves and too often we spare people's feelings because we don't want to lose their support did you hear what i said too often we spare people's feelings because we don't want to lose their support but if it were me and what i'm trying to get you to understand is that if you're going to be truthful you have to learn that if it costs you me your support i got to tell you the truth if it costs me your support i've got to be honest with you if it costs me your support at least my conscience is clear that i told you the truth about how i feel too often we're afraid to be honest with people because we're afraid that if I tell you the truth about how I feel, you might stop supporting me. If I tell you the truth about how I feel, you might stop walking with me. Oh, I'm, I'm going to free up some preachers right about now. Sometimes preachers don't want to tell people the truth because they're good givers. Sometimes preachers don't want to tell people the truth because they're faithful attendees. Sometimes preachers don't want to tell people the truth because they, uh, they always show up and, and they show up on time. But sometimes you just got to be honest with people and tell them the truth about how you feel about a situation even if it costs you their support. And there are two things we can learn from this exchange. Watch this. Although Barnabas was the first person to ride with Paul, Paul wasn't afraid to tell Barnabas how he felt. <laughs> And for those of us who are Paul in a relationship, I'm talking to Paul. Come here, Paul. I'm talking to you. For those of us who are Paul in a relationship, watch this. Don't let people support of you hold your feelings hostage. Don't let people support of you hold your feelings hostage. Don't let people support of you hold your truth hostage. If there comes a point where you gotta be honest with a person, you just gotta be honest with a person. If it comes down to the point where you just gotta tell somebody the truth, oh my God, you just gotta tell somebody the truth. I'd rather tell you the truth than let you live a lie. 
And just because they had your back in one scenario doesn't mean they get to slide in a scenario where they're out of order. Did you hear me? Just because they had your back in one scenario doesn't mean they get to slide when they're out of order. For those of you who are born of us in a relationship, here's your advice. Here's my advice to you. Watch this, Barnabas. Don't feel like your support of someone gives you the right to be disrespectful. Don't feel like your support of someone gives you the right to control them. Don't feel like your support of someone gives you the right to bypass order and honor. Some people, watch this ladies and gentlemen, some people think that because they rock with you when no one else would, it gives them a trump card to handle you how they want. Did you hear what I said? Some people think because they rocked with you when no one else would, because they walked with you when no one else would, because they leaned on you when no one else would, when because they believed in you when no one else would, that it gives them the right, it gives them a trump card. To handle you how they want. And they think they should have access to you that no one else has. They think they can say to you what no one else can. They think their suggestion should, be, should mean more to you than anyone else's. And the moment that you disagree with them. The moment you say I don't know about that. They start withholding their support. They start acting like they don't want to deal with you anymore. They start acting as if there's a problem between the two of you. All of these years, y'all been walking together and, and talking together and, and serving one another and honoring one another. All it takes is one incident. And now they don't even know you anymore. Now they don't want to deal with you anymore. Now they don't want to walk with you anymore. I'm talking to both Paul and Barnabas tonight. I, uh, today, I'm talking to both Paul and Barnabas. I, I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that you've got to be okay with letting people know if I lose you and keep my sanity, I'm good. <laughs> if I lose you and keep my dignity, I'm good. If I lose you and keep my tranquility, I'm good. Because if I've got to bend over backwards and go into the direction you want me to go to get your support, to get your endorsement, to get your backing, I don't want to have to do all that. I'll just be good all by myself. I ain't going to be here long tonight. I got other things to do. <laughs> the second thing we have to learn from this is, watch this. Candor cancels companions. I'm going to say that again. Candor cancels companions. Watch this. If you're a person who is blunt, direct anti-circumlocution where you don't talk around the issue but you directly deal with the issue you ain't gonna have a lot of friends <laughs> let me just free you up you ain't gonna have a lot of friends when you're direct you're not gonna have a lot of friends when you're blunt you're not gonna have a lot of friends when you don't talk around the issue when you go straight to the issue when you go speak straight to the heart of the matter a lot of people don't like that and people ain't gonna want to deal with you so don't be surprised when you find yourself by yourself Paul was like Barnabas <laughs> let me help you understand something I'm gonna try to talk to you the right way. I'm gonna try to be as respectful as possible, but I don't think we should bring John Mark with us on this because he had no part in the work. And when you handle people directly, when you deal with people straight up, people can't handle your cat. 
and your candor will cancel companionship. Paul was like, look, I, I know this is your little cousin and everything, and I know you got some type of nepotism thing going on, but I don't think it's proper to parade him around as if he's a part of our entourage. I, I don't think it's proper to parade him around as if he had a hand in the work. I, I don't think it's proper to parade him around as if he did his part in what we've done. See, they're going on their second mission journey. They had already been on their first mission journey, and it was in their first mission mission journey that they realized that John Mark who actually wrote the gospel according to Mark wasn't cut out for the work and John made his exit and we're going to get to that in a minute but I want you to know that you can expect people to leave you when you're honest while they're front you can expect people to leave you when you're straight up while that's trying to be pretentious. You can expect people to leave you when you're trying to stand up for what's right, but they're putting on. And you've got to understand that when people walk away from you, it's okay. Let's talk about that for a minute before I get up out of here. What we learn from this situation involving Paul and Barnabas is, it's not always good to force relationships. Did you hear what I said? It's not always good to force relationships. Now, granted, at one point, Paul and John Mark had a connection. But at some point, their interest in one another or in the same assignment changed. And for some unknown reason, Mark chose to return to Jerusalem. And we can speculate why his interest changed. Maybe he didn't feel called to the mission field. Maybe he felt more led to write and complete his gospel account. Maybe he felt he could better serve the kingdom in some other way. But whatever his reason was, it was Mark's prerogative to leave, just like it was Paul's prerogative to suggest to Barnabas that they can go on without him. And I think, Ladies and gentlemen, that one of the problems we run into with relationships is attempting to force something that's no longer there. Too often, we try to continue with things when the seasons have changed. And some people don't handle the change of seasons well. Some people don't handle when seasons change. And Mark deciding to do something different didn't make him a bad person. Matter of fact, we probably wouldn't have the synoptic gospels if Mark would have stayed in the situation of trying to fit into the mission field. His gospel was the first and then the other two, Matthew and Luke, follow. However, we get in trouble when we try to force people to stay in situations that no longer fit them. We get in trouble when we try to get people to stay in situations that no longer fit their goals we we get in trouble when we try to get people to stay in situations that they really don't want to be him be in but in reality we end up trying to force them to to stay in the situation after they have checked out and paul understood that mark checked out and when he checked 
out a long time ago, you got to understand even in your own life that when people check out, it's okay to let people check out. You got to allow people the, the, the flexibility to check out and be okay with people checking out and be okay with people tapping out and stop trying to hold on to people too long. Too often we try to hold on to people too long when the season has changed, when the temperature has changed, when the situation has changed, when the circumstance has changed. Let people go. And that's what Paul understood. We have to stop trying to convince folk to stay connected when they've checked out. And we can't get mad at people for wanting to check out. I know it's going to hurt initially. I know we're going to be bothered. I know it's going to be a situation where we feel uncomfortable for a season. But be okay with allowing people the flexibility to check out. I got to go, but here it is. My belief is that Paul felt that Mark was, wasn't cut out for the missionary work. You got to understand, watch this, that Mark left their missionary journey and it was their first missionary journey. And when he left, watch this, the worst stuff hadn't even happened yet. We don't know why Mark left. We, we don't know, maybe he's just felt to do something different and decided to do something different, but, but they hadn't even encountered the worst of it yet when he left. He hadn't seen half of the stuff Paul and Barnabas went through when he left. And by the time they decided to go on a second mission, watch this. Paul had survived being stoned at Lystra. Paul had survived being chased out of Antioch. Paul had survived being persecuted at Iconium. And some believe that it was during their first missionary journey, during Paul's first missionary journey, that he got the revelation of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5 and 22. Because the qualities of love, the qualities of joy, the qualities of patience, the qualities of kindness, the qualities of goodness, the qualities of faithfulness, the qualities of gentleness, and the qualities of self-control can only come to the surface under adversity. And you can't walk with people who you don't know can handle adversity and this is the thing that paul is trying to get barnabas to understand that we don't know if john mark can handle the adversity because when the adversity came he was nowhere to be found he left even under the most simple time he didn't walk with us during the difficulties he didn't walk with us during the challenges, he, he didn't walk with us when we were facing all sorts of attacks. We don't know if he could handle that. He, he, he left when things were easy. Can you imagine what would happen if things got bad? And I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that you can't allow folk to rock with you in the good times, when, uh, been, when they've been untested and unwilling to walk with you in the bad time. I heard somebody say the other day, you can't have a seat at the table unless you set the table. <laughs> Either set the table or handle kitchen duty. And too often, we want people to walk with us who are untested and unproven in the areas that we need strength in. We, we, in the areas that we need to know whether or not they're able to handle. 
I got to go, but here it is. Notice that the text says Barnabas took Mark, but watch this. Paul chose Silas. Barnabas took Mark, but Paul chose Silas. And what this means, ladies and gentlemen, is that Barnabas had it made up in his mind what he was going to do. He had his mind set on who he was going to take. However, Paul was strategic about his next move. You see, the reason why some of us have a history of bad relationships is we don't rebound well. Did you hear what I said? We don't always rebound well. We, we take whoever comes and makes themselves available to us. But Paul chose silence. Meaning Paul took his time. There were other people available he could have taken with him. But he chose silence. And here's what I have to give you, and I got to go. What I really find interesting about the dynamic between Paul and Barnabas' breakup is the Holy Spirit called them together. Did y'all catch the text? The text says that the Holy Spirit said, give me Paul and Barnabas for the work I have chosen them to do. It didn't say a bishop called them. It didn't say an apostle called them. It didn't say a prophet called them. It says that they were had hands laid on them and prayed and fasted for them and released them. But it was the Holy Ghost who put them together. But what I find interesting is even though the Holy Ghost called them together. They still fell out. What's the lesson can we learn in that? Here's the lesson. That if the Holy Spirit can't make people stay together, what makes you think you can? <laughs> we never hear from Barnabas again. We know that Barnabas must have been bitter because of the breakup because we never hear from him again. But what I like about Paul is he didn't allow his breakup to taint the next group of people that came in his life. The text says, being commended by the brethren, to the grace of God, meaning that they admired Paul for how he handled the breakup, whereas Barnabas didn't stick around long enough for them to even admire him for anything. Paul went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Here's what I want you to get before I go. You've got to understand that there's going to be challenges. There's going to be difficulty in your relationship. And you've got to stop trying to keep people in your life who no longer want to be there. And if the Holy Ghost could make Paul and Barnabas stay together, what makes you think you could make somebody stay with you? What makes you think you can make somebody be your friend? What makes you think you can make somebody want to walk with you and live with you and, and, and do life with you? The only thing you can do is control how you handle things. And Paul made sure that he didn't allow the bitterness of a breakup to cause him to lose his strength to pour into other people. 
And from his new relationship with Silas came sons like Timothy and Titus and all of these other people. Oh, oh and yes, uh, Mark came back into his life as he got older. He wasn't upset with Mark. He just knew that Mark wasn't cut out for the work that Barnabas was trying to force him into. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, we try to force people into things that they're not ready for. And we wonder why the relationships don't work. Listen, I'm done. And I hope that you got something out of this series. I hope that you learned the importance of being a good friend. I hope that you learned the importance of looking for a good friend and what to search for in a friend. And I hope that you learn how to handle a breakup. Don't let the bitterness of the breakup cause you to be bitter to where you poison what's next. Let them know, no thanks, I'm good. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited for us to be moving forward. We're gonna start a new series on Easter Sunday. I hope you stick around for the next few weeks. We're gonna have some guest speakers speakers come and present the word of God I'm taking me a little time off and relaxing a little bit no forward rewind over the course of the next few weeks we're going to tinker with that and retool and reassess that and also no Wednesday nights as well which is a private um, discipleship Bible study but we definitely want you to continue to give to the above and beyond offering. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this new door. I thank you, Lord God, for this change and this transformation. And I ask you, Father, to strengthen. I ask you to live. And I ask you, Father, to carry people on in their relationships. May they have good relationships. May they have blessed relationships. May they have relationships to carry them through difficult seasons and challenges. We honor you. We praise you. And we lift you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take care, everybody. Stop.